All right, hello everybody, and welcome to another A plus 1101 Comptia uh, practice quiz. Today, we're going to be doing the usual. We're going to be doing one performance-based question and then one multiple choice question from every single primary exam objective. I'm talking exam objective one, two, three, four. I forgot how to count on my fingers. And absolutely, number five, the most requested one, the troubleshooting where you need to know all the little intricate things. We're going to go through every single one of those exam objectives. So I'm not going to waste your time. I'm not going to sit here talking to you about my life, your life, about how the weather is. We're going to get straight to it with our first multiple, sorry, not multiple choice, our first performance-based question that you can see here on the screen. I'm going to read this out to you. I'm going to give you an opportunity to try to answer it on your own. And then we are going to talk through it and see how we got the answers that we got. Let's go ahead and do it. The question reads, you have been tasked with setting up 802.11 networks at multiple sites across the city. You must use the requirements provided by the attached diagram in order to select the correct 802.11 standard. Building one on the left has two primary requirements. The first one is it must reach speeds of 54 megabit per second. The second requirement of that building is it must not be susceptible to interference from baby monitors. The building on the right has two requirements as well. It must have MU-MIMO. I'm going to go easy on you here and say that that means multiple user, multiple in, multiple out. It must have that capability, and it only needs one frequency. And more specifically, they do not want the option for two. They specifically don't want two. They want multiple user, multiple in, multiple out, and they only want one frequency. Pause the video here. Think long and hard about this question. You'll notice there's no multiple choice answers to choose from. You're not always going to be able to rely on multiple choice, particularly when it comes to the performance-based components. The only way to get past this is to know your 802.11 standards off the top of your head. You need to know that. Pause the video, have a go. I'm going to be moving on to the answer in three, two, one. Okay, drum roll. The answer is for building one on the left, standard 802.11. A, for building two on the right, the correct standard was 802.11 AC. Hopefully you got that right. If you didn't, that's okay. It's a good thing because now you know something that you need to go home and study today after work. Let's have a look at how we got there. Okay, so we had two primary bits of information for each of these buildings. The building on the left, 54 megabit per second, that was requirement number one. Immediately, let's think, what standards meet that requirement? Let's have a look. We're gonna head over to our table here. Okay, we're gonna to go to speed. We only have two 54 megabit per, se per second. One is 802.11a and the other is 802.11g. So immediately, we're choosing from two standards, A or G. The next piece of key criteria will tell us which of those it needs to be. The second criteria was, it must not be susceptible to interference from baby monitors. That's the ticket. One of these standards is at 5 gigahertz and one is at 2.4 gigahertz. Little quiz for you here. Which one of those frequencies is the same frequency that baby monitors operate on? We want to choose whichever standard is not the frequency that baby monitors operate on so that we can avoid getting any interference. So as you can see, you really need to know these off by heart for your exam. Okay, let's take a look at building two. Again, two primary criteria. They needed multiple user, multiple in, multiple out. If we have a look at our graph here, we have two standards again that have multiple user, multiple in, multiple out. It is 802.11ac and 802.11an. Now the second piece of criteria is they only wanted one frequency. They specifically didn't want two. So 802.11an operates on 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz. So it's not gonna be that one because that has two frequencies. Whereas 802.11ac 
only operates on the 5 gigahertz frequency. So that is the only one that can possibly meet all those criteria. That is how we got there. So the only way for you to have really done well on this one is to simply know your 82, 802. It's such a mouthful. 802.11 standards. You need to know the frequencies they operate on. You need to the you need to know the pros and cons of each one. You need to know which ones do multiple user, multiple in, multiple out. You need to know which ones do only multiple in, multiple out. It's a lot to take in. The A plus exam is very broad. It covers a lot, but it's only shallow. It's not very deep, but it does cover a lot. You need to know how to repair a printer, and you also need to know uh, the basics of all 802.11 standards so it's shallow but it's broad you need to make sure you study that if you got that one one wrong we might have messed up that performance based question but that's okay because there's still 90 in the real exam or 90 ish 80 to 90 or so multiple choice questions that you can use to get those points back so don't stress it's okay let's move on to primary objective number one the question reads cameron wants to purchase a device with touch screen capabilities. What technology does he need to make sure the device contains? A, digitizer, B, digital manual array, or DMA, C, USB-C compatibility, or D, fast charging to negate additional power expenditure? Have a think about it. Moving to the answer in three seconds. Pause the video if you need more time. Let's take a look. The answer is a digitizer. A digitizer is a technology that enables touchscreen capabilities by converting the physical touch or stylus input into digital signals that the device can understand. Essentially, guys, if we're talking about something that enables touchscreen capabilities, it is a digitizer. That's going to be a key piece of information. There's a good chance that will come up in the exam. You need to know that a digitizer enables touch screen, touch screen capabilities. As for these other options, uh, I made B up. That was just from the deepest depths of my imagination. And um, D was just some gibberish that I came up with. It's absolutely not anything to do with anything, really. USB-C compatibility. Um, technically, you could plug in a, potentially a USB-C trackpad, which could give you touchscreen capabilities. So that's kind of a trick one because you could get touchscreen capabilities, but that's when it comes down to reading the question carefully. It's about which answer is most correct, not which answer could technically, if we twist it the right way, be correct. Which one is absolutely the most clear, obvious, evident answer? And if we read through the question carefully, we'll see that it is absolutely digitizer in the situation. We'll go again. Cameron wants to purchase a device with touchscreen capabilities. So he wants a device with touchscreen capabilities. He doesn't want a device that if you buy an additional third party piece of equipment could have no, the device has to have touchscreen capabilities. Further, what technology does he need to make sure the device contains? Okay, so there is nothing about buying a third party. It's specified what technology should that device that he is buying there contain, which is how we know digitizer is the right answer. Hopefully we got that one right. Again, if not, we know what we need to study. Moving on to primary objective number two. Let's take a look. The question reads, your friend Rajesh has called you during your lunch break to ask you for advice relating to his internet connection. He wants to purchase a modem that provides internet over previously existing television cables. Additionally, he wants to ensure the ISP is reliable and can reach speeds of up to one gigabit per second. Based on this information, what modem do you recommend to Rajesh? A. DSL B. Cable C. O. N. T D. N. I. C E. S. D. N or F. None of the above. He should use a hub instead. A lot of options to choose from there. I'm not giving you much of a chance to guess to get that one right. You have to know your stuff. Pause the video if you need more time. Going to the answer in a couple of seconds. Here we go. The answer is B, cable. Cable modems are designed to provide internet connectivity over existing television cable lines. 
They are commonly used in areas where cable TV service is available. Cable modems can offer high speed internet connections and can reach speeds of up to one gigabit per second. So it matches all the criteria that we needed. In terms of your exam, you're going to need to know basically um, every different potential method of connecting to the internet. More specifically, you're going to be able to need to look at a scenario and based on the information in that scenario, make a judgment on what the most, uh, what the best type of connecting to the internet in that situation would be. Some things you might need to take into, into consideration would be what previous connections are in existence. Do they have television lines? Do they have phone lines already there? Do they have um, fiber optics specifically? Based on that, you'll need to be able to make that judgment. Now, here's information on those incorrect answers. If you want to pause the video, zoom in and have a read, I'm not going to read that out to you because you're probably getting sick of my voice by now anyway. So we'll move on to the next exam objective, to the next question, which reads, the question reads, you are helping a colleague choose the appropriate solid state drive for their workstation upgrade. They are looking for the fastest interface available to take advantage of their high performance applications. Which SSD interface would provide the highest speed based on the information in the scenario? A. SATA B. USB 3.0 C. PCIe or D. NVMe a lot to choose from there. Got to know your stuff. Pause the video if you need more time. Going to the answer in three, two, one. The answer is D, NVMe. NVMe, or Non-Volatile Memory Express, is the SSD interface that offers the highest speed. It achieves these highest speeds by utilizing the PCIe bus, which provides a dedicated high-speed pathway for data transfer between the SSD and the computer's processor. So guys, You've got PCIe and you've got NVMe. They both use the same setup, essentially. They both go into the same place. You plug them both into the same thing. But the difference is PCIe, it's more broad. It's more dynamic. You're able to plug in a wide variety of expansion cards. And the sacrifice for that wide variety is that it's not necessarily absolutely focused on speed. Whereas NVMe, plug it into the same place, but it is only designed to connect SSDs. And as a result, you've got such high speeds. It's only designed for that one purpose. Plug in an SSD and get those speeds going. Okay, so you're gonna need to know, uh, here's some information on the incorrect answers there. You'll need to know the speeds of different methods of connections and based on the requirements, which one should you be using? You will need to know that for the exam. Make sure you're up to scratch on that. I know it's a lot. It is a lot, but I passed it. So you can too. Don't let the stress get to your head. Let's move on to the next question. Almost there for this practice quiz for the A plus 1101 exam. The question reads, in which scenario would the use of virtual machines be an appropriate solution? A, creating a local development environment for legacy software testing. B, running high-performance video editing software on a resource-limited computer, C, browsing the internet without fear of getting a malware infection, or D, distributing a single licensed software application to multiple users without purchasing additional licenses. Pause the video if you want to stop and think about that one. Moving on to the answer in three, two, one. The answer is A creating a local development environment for legacy software testing. A virtual machine can be used to create an isolated environment to run legacy software without affecting the host operating system. This allows developers to test older applications without conflicts or compatibility issues. And there's some more information on the incorrect answers here. Pause if you wanna read those. So I'm gonna kinda of go through each of these answers here. Our correct answer was A, creating a local development environment for legacy software testing. B, running high performance video editing software on a resource limited computer. So basically what this is saying is you have a computer with limited resources. So to get around that, you're going to use a virtual machine. But that's not going to work because the virtual machine relies on the available resources of the computer that it is installed on. 
It's not some magical thing that exists far away, unless you're doing cloud computing, but this didn't mention anything about uh, a cloud-based virtual machine. Okay, that would be a different story. It's, it's, uh, it hasn't specified that. And considering A is absolutely something you could use on the system, it's much better to assume that's the correct option. Again, it's not about technically this could be the right answer. It's about what is the most clear, most obvious answer based on the information we've been given. A is absolutely more correct than B. Uh, C, browsing the internet without fear of getting a malware infection. Not true. Virtual machines do not protect you from infection. Uh, you absolutely can get an infection on your virtual machine, and that absolutely can then spread to the host machine. That is a very real possibility. You need to take all the same security precautions with a virtual machine that you do with a physical machine. And D, distributing a single license software application to multiple users without purchasing additional licenses. Unfortunately, you cannot get around it that way. Otherwise, um, you know, th those companies would be out of business very, very quickly. So... We'll move on to the final question for this practice quiz. Let's take a look. Exam objective five. Let's go. The question reads, you have been experiencing faded printouts from your laser printer. What is a likely cause of this issue and how can you address it? A, a scratch on the photosensitive drum. B, dirty print heads in an inkjet printer. C, a mismatch between printer language and driver language. D, low ink or toner levels. Give you a few seconds to think about that. Pause the video. If you do need more time, we'll move to the answer in three, two, one. The correct answer is D, low ink or toner levels. Faded printouts are often caused by low ink or toner levels. When the ink or toner levels are not running low, sorry, are running low, the print quality can deteriorate, resulting in faded prints. The other options do not directly align with the criteria. So, you should be able to look at each of these options. A, a scratch on the photosensitive drum, and know what problem or symptom that would cause. It's not going to cause a faded printouts. It will cause some sort of issue on your printer. You need to know what that is. Okay, so... You'll need to basically have this wide variety of information that you see here. This is just the notes from my learning guide, which of course you can get at uh, journeydecyber.com. But you know, I'm not I'm not pushing you, but just if you want, you can. It's up to you. You know, think about it. And you might also want to theoretically design some open-ended questions for yourself that you can use to study and really make sure you know your stuff. And theoretically, if you didn't want to write all these out, you could go to journeydecyber.com and grab my learning guide for five dollars. But hey. That's just an option. Okay, guys, I will leave that with you. Let me know how you went in the comments below. And if you have any specific questions about anything in the A plus 1101 exam that you want me to cover, let me know as well. I am absolutely excited to do personalized videos for you guys because I know there are some area, areas that some people struggle with more than other areas. So I'd love to do some focused videos. If you have any ideas, let me know in the comments down below. Other than that, I'll see you in the next one, which will be dropping in two days. So... If you haven't subscribed, do it, because I put these out once every two days. And if you haven't hit that bell notification icon, hit that as well. Otherwise, you're missing out on these very crucial study resources. Okay, I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.